thank you very much for clicking on this video. Consider this a part two of my previous video two days ago, I think it was, on what to look out for with regards to your orchid about to bloom, if it's a weak orchid, if it's an orchid you're eager to see to bloom. Anyway, that video will be linked in the description. Basically, this is kind of a part two, a more of a deep dive. And I thought, you know, let's do this back to back. So before I get into that, <laughs> this is more like a podcast and we're staring at buds. I'm going to be addressing more the Phalaenopsis side because we know those and we can get a clear growth cycle and we can determine what is going on step by step. Meanwhile, all these aspects will apply to every other orchid. But if I went into Cattleyas or Lelias, there's different seasons. So I'm just using Phalaenopsis as an example in this video, which you can then hopefully recognize, apply for any other orchid that you might have in your collection where you're in a conundrum, should you cut the spike or not, or also when. But just to stick with the Phalaenopsis theme, I do have my Shilleriana here, okay? So <laughs> there's a little bit of that. And if I talk long enough, <laughs> no. Don't worry, this is not a threat. If I talk long enough, maybe first bud over there will open and we can actually see it cracking open because this has gone on for far too long. My goodness, it's taking forever to see these blooms open. But that being said, I hope this is okay. I hope the information is still going to be useful to you. And as a deep dive with regards to what is the orchid doing when it comes to the spikes and our decision-making process, should we cut them or shouldn't we cut them? And if we are going to cut them, the timing of cutting them. In my opinion, there's two things in an orchid that consume the most energy, new growth, which include leaves for monopodials and blooms, including spikes, branching and bud development, etc. Everything that is pertaining to getting the orchid to bloom out consumes a lot of energy. I am not excluding roots. They take up energy as well to grow, but not as draining as new structures and the process it takes for a spike on an orchid to bloom out. So now, in order to understand my thought process and where I'm coming from with regards to timing, I need to start with understanding the growth habit of an orchid. And again, I'm using a fowl as an example because it is easier to follow and we are more clear about the seasons, the growth, as opposed to Cattleya's species, different time frames. Just remember this applies to all orchids when you understand the whys, which I'm going to get into. Let's just start with temperatures, okay? For a Phalaenopsis, the lowest temperature that it is still happy at is 18 degrees Celsius. And anything higher is its happy zone. When it comes to Phalaenopsis, we know lower temperatures will trigger spikes. Not lower than 18 degrees. A temperature drop, which I mentioned in a previous video, a temperature drop is all relative, but a temperature drop in Phalaenopsis will trigger spikes. But the temperature drop is required to trigger the hormones, to mobilize the hormones that signal to the orchid, yay, it is time to get moving, time to get reproducing, we can now grow a spike. If there is no temperature drop, the relevant hormones don't get mobilized that trigger a spike. But now we get into what hormones do, even if an orchid is not healthy. The orchid's main purpose is to live, to reproduce, which are the flowers, and to grow. And that cycle continues. However, we need to understand that survival is the most important thing for an orchid. So it does that by blooming. And we grow orchids for their blooms. Now, a weak orchid will want to bloom because it is dying. So hormones are being mobilized for the survival of the orchid and it will trigger a spike because the hormones are now mobilized fight for survival mode. However, before a Phalaenopsis actually dies, it will send all its energy reserves into producing a spike. All the hormones are focused on blooming. In nature, this may or may not work because pollinators may or may not come and do their job. In cultivation, our orchids in stress is pushing a spike, but at that point, it is not doing anything else. There are no new roots, 
no new structures, the hormones are in spike and bloom mode. We have a choice at this point in time. Understand our orchid and know what it is doing and why. Any weak orchid will attempt to bloom. Know that if you think you have a weak orchid and then you see a spike, it does not mean good news. It does not mean your orchid is recovering and that it's going to be fine. On the contrary, the opposite is true. What we need to do at this point is to work with the hormones and let them do their thing for as long as possible because once the hormones have worked their magic long enough and the orchid is about to bloom, my classic example is always the buds are extending away from the spike. The metabolism of an orchid being so slow, the hormones start to reduce in their spike producing activity to then collect for the next phase of the orchid's growth or rest depending. And the hormones change their chemical makeup for when that time comes and it is about the metabolism. Everything is much much slower. So let's go back to this Phalaenopsis example when the temperatures drop. We can have a temperature drop and we won't see spikes for maybe six weeks, but your temperatures have been low enough for six weeks and yet there is no spike. It takes from the moment that a trigger happens in an orchid for a reaction to happen and come out of it like a spike at least six to eight weeks. So the mobilization of hormones, the gathering and accumulation of those hormones to then do what the orchid does next has a delay function, even though we have already given it the care for an extended period of time. I hope that makes sense. Just because we're dropping the temperatures, there isn't a spike in a day or two. We're dropping temperatures, hormones get mobilized, once they are concentrated and accumulated where they need to be, then they respond and the slow metabolism of an orchid draws that out and it can take a considerable amount of time that those hormones actually trigger a visual result for us to see which is a spike. And that is important with regards to when I say let the buds separate themselves from the spike because by that time the hormones will have registered that the orchid is going to bloom. This brings me to the slow metabolism which goes with what fowls do and how long does all of this take. So going by the principle of a healthy phalaenopsis, this helps us to understand why cutting a spike from a weak fowl is paramount. Now I will refer to the Northern Hemisphere months as I am more familiar with those, but if you convert those to Southern Hemisphere, the same will apply. And I will go with how my orchids grow here and then you in your mind just go with what happens to your fowls in your grow space environment or greenhouse. Now here with me in southern Spain, my fowls usually push spikes when the temperatures have dropped around October and November. Then it takes us to February or March for the first blooms to open and that already consumes four months of energy. Then they bloom, the energy consumption, not even including the branching or extending the spike. I'm just talking about when the Phalaenopsis first opens their bloom. They will bloom all the way through to August. That is another five months of energy consumption. So now we have nine months approximately of the fowl focusing on spikes and blooms, root growth and structure growth are absolutely no priority at all at this time nine months on a healthy phalaenopsis. Meanwhile, as the orchid blooms, the hormones are starting to collect to initiate the next phase of the orchid's growth. And that takes another four months. While the orchid is blooming, those hormones have done their job, and then they go down and gather and do whatever they do. They start to concentrate on the next phase of the orchid's growth. And while the orchid is blooming, this is happening, but again, it takes four months. So that's where my margin of about nine months comes from before we see anything happening to the orchid while she is in bloom. Nine months is a long time, even for a healthy Phalaenopsis. So the next phase obviously being the hormones have gathered. Now we're gonna focus on structure growth, whether they're extending a root system, starting with a new root system to build the existing root system, whatever it is that is the next phase of the orchid's growth. 
and that is the hormone concentration at a certain stage to be ready for the growth during the warmest months of the year. But we can manipulate those growth hormones that are responsible for new structures and roots to gather sooner if we cut the spikes off prematurely. And that gives us the opportunity to cut the nine months of extensive energy consumption to half, which will really work in favor of preserving a weak orchid. The spike growth hormones configuration will have already switched off. The climate will be warmer, so structures and root growth hormones are already scrambling to do their thing. And based on the weather, all this can get the chance to do their thing sooner than they normally would. Now, let's go back. My orchid started blooming in March, hypothetically, and it would bloom all the way through August. If I cut my spike, prematurely so that the orchid thinks it's bloomed and I've tricked the hormones and they're all gathering now ready to activate when the temperatures are warmer because they've done their job, now it's the next phase. Cutting that spike in February as opposed to letting it bloom out gives me March, April, May, June, July, six months that I've saved the orchid from having any excessive energy consumption by letting those blooms bloom out. And if we go back to what I said earlier, once a trigger has initiated as with low temperatures, it still takes six to eight weeks before we see a spike growing. Now, take that and take it to, let's say, February, March, and we cut a spike off prematurely to preserve the energy of the orchid. It'll take six to eight weeks before seeing a new leaf grow or new roots. All this is coming from the perspective of a not controlled environment. My temperatures drop naturally and rise naturally. The question now being, what about a controlled environment? For any weak orchid, a controlled and steady environment is ideal as it reduces the stress. But in such a controlled environment, a spike may not even develop. So everything about having to cut a spike would not apply the orchid should be happily growing structures and roots. I hope that makes sense. And that's why I chose the fowl as an example, because in order to trigger something, the controlled environment also needs a temperature reduction. Otherwise, we'll just get beautiful leaves and beautiful roots, which is great. But again, if you're talking about a weak orchid going into spike, it is the orchid and the hormones that says, I'm gonna die whether I'm in a control environment or not, hence I'm gonna send out a spike. So now we're talking about the same thing I mentioned before, where are the hormones focusing on? What are they concentrating on? And now let's take those months of while the spike develops before we cut it off, and then we can cut the energy consumption time in half by prematurely cutting off the spike. Please let me know in the comments section below if I'm making any, any sense at all. What I'm trying to explain is that the sooner we cut off a spike, the longer the orchid has in a grow period in the happy temperature range that it likes. When we take the spike off prematurely, we are extending that grow period through those warmer temperature months. If we let it grow out, we are really narrowing down not only when we remove the blooms or when the orchid has stopped blooming or when it naturally wants to start growing again because it's going to have to hustle to grow two new structures before the temperatures drop again and then the cycle repeats itself. Cutting a spike prematurely on a weak orchid gives us double the amount of time for the orchid to recover, recuperate, and then focus on what it should be doing in our collection to survive, not what it does in nature to survive. It's all about the hormones, the energy consumption or energy preservation. And that is why I say cut the spikes at X time when the buds push out from the stem, because by that time, the hormones are happily going all the way back down and gathering for the next phase of growth. The thing with leaving an orchid to bloom out that is weak and letting that spike bloom, nine months is a long time. And then, even though we may have enjoyed the blooms, Whatever happens after that takes another six weeks to eight weeks for the growth hormones to kick in. By that time, there is possibly no more energy reserves left in any of the orchid and she's just going to collapse. Seeing as we're not able to pollinate something that is weak, it won't carry a seed pod and we don't have the conditions where any seeds would fall if the seed pod were to mature. 
like in nature for the seeds then to fall somewhere and then start the process of creating new orchids and the survival of the orchid. So when I speak cutting a spike, I am talking about tricking the orchid because of the hormones to initiate something a lot sooner, giving it plenty of time and preserving the energy reserves that the orchid has so that she can actually grow new growths and new roots. Now in the orchid hobby, clearly nothing is guaranteed, not even whether all this made sense. That is why we have a comment section. So keep writing, keep asking. Any orchid, even though I would say cut the spike may still collapse. And then you would say, well, yippee yay, yay my orchid was dying anyway. I could have let her bloom, enjoyed the blooms and yeah, and then she would die. But we're going from the principle of positive thinking. If I'm going to say, well, my orchid's going to die anyway, I'm just going to enjoy the blooms. Then, you know, then I'll buy a Phalaenopsis or any other store-bought orchid and put her into my growth space, enjoy the blooms, let her die and buy another one. So I'm going by the principle of positive thinking. Now, it can always happen that an orchid's going to collapse and die anyway, even if the spike was cut. There are no guarantees, but what I'm trying to say is if we are wanting to preserve an orchid, the best practice is to conserve the energy as best as possible, but make sure that the timing of the cut is right so that the hormones aren't still accumulating down where their spike is supposed to grow. Doing it prematurely, the hormones are still fresh and very concentrated, they'll throw out another spike and then we have the whole process again and we're going to have to wait another six to eight weeks or even three months until the timing is right to cut that spike. So if we're going to cut spike, we might as well do it the right way. We might as well wait the longest possible, getting those buds to separate from the stem and then cut because by that time spring has arrived, temperatures are warming up and the other hormones are already busy accumulating and concentrating to get on with the growth and the root production. So this is not a guarantee that your orchid will live, but not cutting a spike is a guarantee your orchid will die. So thinking positively, I would cut a spike all the time, every time. And I've come to the point actually since 2019 when I cut 13 spikes during that winter spring season off my complex Phalaenopsis hybrids I've come into the point when I see a weak orchid, I just can't wait to get that spike off, but I have to wait until the buds separate. I have learned that lesson when I've had a struggling keiki. That thing had one leaf and is trying to push out spikes. Three spikes in succession because I cut them off too soon. I cut them off when they were like a centimeter or two long. Think, oh no, you don't cut. Four weeks later, another nubbin is developing, another spike. Now that I understand what all the hormones are doing and where they're going and what they're focusing on, and especially on a weak orchid, it's about survival, survival, survival. And that is what we want for our orchids as well in our hobby. Survive, survive, survive. And the way that we can go about it is helping the orchid conserve the little energy she has if she is a stressed weak orchid and making sure that she has the reserves left to grow a new structure or new roots. If she then still collapses, then that is of course really, really sad, but not doing anything, letting her bloom out, she will die. So if you want to save your orchid and do the best that you can to save your orchid, spikes have to come off. Andre Dumas had a follow-up question on that video that aired regarding should she bloom? Should we not let the plant decide what it wants to do? That is obviously a choice, that is an option, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Personally, it is for me, can the orchid survive after it does what it does? And once again, a weak orchid will bloom because that is the only way the nature of the orchid will think it's going to survive because of reproduction, pollination, etc. If the orchid is a flowering size orchid, then it is going to try and bloom. And if we want to leave that up to the orchid to decide, then it is possible that that it's a swan song. Those blooms are the last it's going to have if they even make it. Because remember, there's still the risk of bud blast. A weak orchid may push out a spike, may push out buds, and there is still going to be bud blast because the energy to open those blooms, there's nothing left in the orchid. The reserves are spent. So just keep that in mind. 
in our hobby here, we want to see the blooms. And I understand it is one of the hardest things to do to cut a spike. But trust me, from the perspective of my orchid is going to have a lot more time to recover and then hopefully the energy to bring out new structures. You're doing the orchid a favor. The hormones are everything. The hormones are key. The hormones are triggered by whatever the temperature says and does. It's all part and parcel of the care of the orchid. So whatever the hormones are doing, the slow metabolism of any orchid, it takes a while before we see the visual results of what the hormones have been doing. And the same thing for when it comes to growing new structures or new roots or whatever. Very, very rarely. When you see new root growth, usually not just on fowls, but on cattleyas or let's say even angrecoids, you will probably see new root growth either before the orchid blooms or two weeks into the blooming of an orchid, you will see that mature growth growing new roots because the hormones have already had six, eight weeks knowing the buds are going to bloom out. Think knowing in adverted commas. And then they travel all the way down and then they start what needs to be done at the base of the orchid. And some sympodial orchids will grow roots before a new growth starts at the same time as new growth starts. And it's like the question of the chicken and the egg. Which came first, the new growth or the roots? So if there's an orchid that is blooming out on top and it's already got three beautiful blooms, you've been enjoying them and suddenly on the bottom you're seeing roots growing, does that mean the roots are growing now because the growth is mature and bloomed out? Or does it mean the roots are growing because, oh, we're about to see a new growth starting? And I'm not trying to make this video long and I know that probably staring at buds is boring, but I'm trying to really hone in on the fact that the hormones take a long time to do what they're doing. So the conservation of the orchid is about understanding how slow their metabolism of our orchids is. We call them slow growers compared to other plants and they are, but it takes a lot longer for the hormones to actually visually show us that the orchid is doing something and knowing what's going on that we cannot see is also fundamental when it comes to the timing of what we then do see. Spikes or blooms or roots or new structures. Cutting that time in half can pretty much save an orchid from collapsing or growing new structures. So, oh boy, let me know in the comments below if all of that makes sense. <laughs> it does in my head. I've seen it happen in my collection and I've seen orchids die anyway in my collection. That's a different story altogether. What happened after I cut the spike? It is not because you cut the spike that your orchid will collapse. Once again, your orchid will collapse if it is weak and you let it bloom. That's almost guaranteed. So yeah, awkward, <laughs> long. I hope that this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. I don't mind doing another video and getting more specific or maybe not talking so long, but breaking it down into Here's your time frame, video five minutes. But I wanted to throw it out there as to let the orchid decide. Well, the orchid is already deciding when it's starting a spike. The decision process of stopping that flowering is then up to us. And the when is important so that there's no waste of energy so that the orchid can have the best chance of recovery. Wow, yeah, too many circles. I don't know, I hope not. Meanwhile, if you've come this far, I better stop because my head is now going. I could still say this, this, this. But anyway, I better stop. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this was helpful. And even if it wasn't, I want to know so that I can do better next time. All right. I appreciate your time if you're still here. Thank you so very, very much. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition, please. That you stay safe. Oh, <laughs> and after all this, that bud still hasn't opened. Oh well, maybe next time. <laughs> Take care. Bye.